Is it getting harder or easier as you create more seasons to play Jesus? Season five is the most challenging thing I've ever done as an actor. And I think it's going to be the most powerful season that we've ever done. Was there a moment during those eight years where you felt like throwing it in, throwing in the towel and being like, I can't, I'm not going to keep trying at this acting thing? Yeah, it was three months before I booked The Chosen. I was broken, you know, spiritually and emotionally. And I, I had to just get on my knees and just surrender my entire life and my career. And Jonathan Rumi, welcome to the podcast. And, uh, thank you so much. Thanks for making time to do this. Thanks for having me. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, a little <laughs> bit. It's been it's been a busy season, but um, God's in charge, so I'm just trying to keep up. Awesome. Yeah. And you've got the crowds following you, too, and touching your robe. <laughs> yeah, the hem of the garment just diving at me every time you <laughs> so. But no, it's been, it's been great. It's been a journey. Did you ever, did you ever think when you were starting your acting career that you would you would be where you are now. Well, I think probably globally recognized and wherever you go, people literally follow you, calling you Jesus. I mean, I never uh, conceived of the, the cons of, of, of the idea of playing, of being known for playing Jesus. Um, you know, when you start considering the ideas of, of success as a performer, as an actor or as an artist, whatever it is, you ultimately um, come to the realization that if there is success, then people will know who I am. So there will, there will be a certain amount of privacy that you will sacrifice, which is why when I first thought about acting as a, as a profession, my, uh, my main interest, my priority was, was uh, specializing in voiceover. So animation was something that really appealed to me. And I thought, well, I have complete anonymity pretty much doing voiceover. So that'll be great because I never wanted to to lose my privacy or my anonymity, but God obviously had other plans. So I'm like, thanks. It is what it is, but it's good. He's, he's been, he's brought me through it, uh, all of it, uh, piecemeal in a way that is manageable. So I'm, I'm grateful. A big thank you to our partner, Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app on the globe. This app has thousands of prayers, guided meditations, scripture readings, and more for you to deepen your faith life. If you download Hallow today using the link in the description, you will get three months free. Their content doesn't just include prayers and scripture readings, but it also includes sleep stories to help you fall asleep and kids content so that you can listen to it with your kids in the car on the way to school or when you're running errands or whatever you're doing and they can grow in their faith too. The reason that Hallow is the number one prayer app because it's excellent content that is deeply rooted in your faith. Everything about Hallow is designed to create a deeper prayer experience for you in the busyness of your daily life. So go to the link in the description to download Hallow for free for three months to deepen your prayer life. You, when you started doing The Chosen, you were, how were you discovered to do The Chosen? I know a little bit of the story, but I want to make yeah. sure our listeners know it. Yeah. So I did, uh, I knew Dallas Jenkins uh, four years previous to, to the start of The Chosen. I got cast playing Jesus in a short film for his church's Good Friday service in Chicago, outside of Chicago. And, uh, and so we had a really good experience with that short film. And I literally was on screen for like five minutes during the crucifixion. Um, it was a short film called the two thieves, which you can find, I think on Amazon. And then, um, so we had a good experience with that. And then he asked me to come back the following year to play Jesus again for another good Friday, uh, short film for this church. And then we skipped a year and then the fourth year we did another one. And then it was about a year and a half later that uh, The Chosen came into existence and it was kind of like, I get to put the sandals back on. It's pretty cool. And when he, when you were doing those, that role for him, for his church, mm -hmm. you said you were only want, you wanting to do voiceovers before that. Yeah. So what, what shifted for you that you were willing to be on screen as Jesus? Maybe well, it was because it was the role of Jesus? Well, no, by then I was already in Los Angeles. So I'm from New York originally. I moved to Los Angeles in 2010 and then I met Dallas in 2014. So my decision to move to Los Angeles was based on the fact that I had um, come to terms with, with my a desire to act full time professionally because I had had some success in New York, not a whole lot, but enough where I thought, I think I could do this. And I was already, I'd already been working on camera in New York. So I'd done a bunch of commercials 
the early 2000s and then then like 2007 eight, i started booking tv shows i did a few soaps um i did a couple of small parts and pretty decent sized films with some big names and i thought i think i think uh, i think i could kind of make a living at this and then i went to la and then struggled for eight years before the chosen actually. eight years yeah that's crazy yeah and and you know i the the previous 12 years prior to that i started in voiceover so i was at it for literally 20 years wow before, as an actor before the chosen hit they, they you know that saying that every overnight sensation yeah. is 20 years in the making actually yeah yeah so i when i was two years out of college uh, i was working in production on a movie called uh, analyze this directed by mm -hmm. the late harold ramus and i had just started doing voiceover my first gigs was were in 1998 and that was the year we were filming the the movie and uh and he had heard that i was interested in acting and he says you know it takes 15 years to be an overnight success or 20 depending on who you talk to and i said yeah but that's for everybody else i mean he literally to to the to the year it was wow. exactly 20 years so was there a moment during those eight years kind of in the wilderness of la and you're doing some roles and you're working where you felt like throwing it in, throwing in the towel and being like, I can't, I'm not going to keep trying at this acting thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was three months before I booked the chosen. I, I basically came to a, a career crisis, a, a financial crisis. I was, um, I was completely broke and I, I was broken, you know, spiritually and emotionally. And I, I, I was holding on to my faith and, and I just didn't understand why God would lead me here give me these, you know, occasional successes and, and foster this desire within my heart, give me the skills to, to clearly be able to do the work, but, but not have it lead to anything. And what I realized and, and actually documented this process at the time, which you can actually see in, in a documentary I did called Jonathan and Jesus, which is also on Amazon. Um, I, I, uh, I got to the point where like, I, I just, I had to just get on my knees and just surrender my entire life and my career. And the thing that I hadn't done was surrender my career because I was trying to manage the control of it. I was trying to check all the boxes, the things that I had to do to be a successful actor. And I was doing them and I was juggling a bunch of different, you know, side jobs. And then all of a sudden those dried up. And next thing I know, I'm like out of food and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to buy food tomorrow. And I, I experienced after I, I surrendered hours later, a fun, a literal financial miracle that changed my, my life. It changed my concept of what it meant to surrender to God, to really trust God, to have faith, to, to activate my faith in a way that I never did before. And that changed everything. And the minute I did that, said that surrender prayer, like the weight lifted. And then it was three or four hours later where I, I got, ended up getting four checks in the mail that came from all these disparate, you know, companies that some of which I hadn't worked in in years. And there was like, oh, we forgot to pay you five years worth of residuals. Here's 800 bucks. And I went from a negative 80 bucks in my bank account and thousands of dollars in debt that morning in May of 2018 to that afternoon having $1,100 in these checks. And I was like, I guess that's, what I haven't done is just completely trusted God that he would take care of me. And then three months later, I booked the chosen. So that's incredible. It's never been, my life's never been the same since. When you were working as an actor and before that, as the voice actor in New York and then LA, what was your life like with God? Were you trying to be a practicing Christian? You, you mentioned, you I wasn't trying to be a saint. Okay. Now I'm trying to be a saint. What's the difference? Everything is the difference. It's what are your priorities in your life? How are you living your, your social life? Well, how do you feel about the issues of life? You know, um, what do you measure? By what standards do you measure the quality and success of your life and the holiness of your life? I hadn't considered what it meant to be holy. I thought it was, that was something that, I that wasn't attainable for somebody like me. You know, um, and, and then when I surrendered that it didn't, it wasn't just about my career. It, it, be, it began a series of, 
um, well, even prior to that, there began a series of steps in my, my personal life and my relationships where I'm like, I can't date the same way anymore. Like these things haven't worked. Why haven't they worked? And here's why. And what I realized is that like in my career, God wasn't first in my relationships. So it's like, well, I have faith, but if she doesn't, I'm, that's okay. I mean, live and let live, you know? And then I realized like, no, I think, I don't think it can work like that for me when you're, when you're on this journey to get closer to God in every aspect and to, 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 to achieve, you know, this level of, of holiness or this nearness to Christ, it has to fundamentally change how you live your life and how you see the world and how you think about people and relationships and, and, and all of those areas that are fundamental to the human experience. And the surrender moment this where, where the, I received these checks was just a reinforcement of that. I have to give myself wholly and completely to God. There's no way around it. And it's pretty flippin' difficult at times, but that, that is the journey we are asked to do. It's never, I mean, a lot of people have the concept of um, the saint is somebody who lived the perfect life and, and nine times out of 10, it, it was the opposite of that. It's like they suffered and they had, you know, it's like, oh, a saint, like they had no problems and they were just perfect and pious. And like, no, like if you start reading about the saints, it's Hallow, the Hallow app does this, it is the Saints in Seven Days Challenge. And, and um, I narrated this one for uh, St. Maximilian Colby, which is going on right now. I was cut, which is kind of finishing up this week and like some of the harrowing experiences that these people went through before, you know, usually martyrdom, um, were just enough to make you go like, well, if that guy's doing that. Like, I, I think I can come up a little bit in my life, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not living in, you know, the middle of world war two Germany and in, in, in a prison camp in Auschwitz, but you know, like, what are my struggles and how can I offer my struggles to God and how can I offer up myself and how can I serve my fellow human more uh, soulfully and, and intentionally? I need to tell you about my favorite coffee company, Seven Weeks Coffee. Seven Weeks Coffee works directly with farmers using fair trade so that they can support farmers who are doing an amazing job growing the best beans in the world. All of Seven Weeks Coffee comes from the highest quality, one to 2% of all the coffee beans that are harvested. Seven Weeks Coffee is small batch roasted, low acid, and organic. You're going to love these coffee blends. They're some of my favorite. I love Ethiopia Medium. You can go on sevenweekscoffee.com and look at their light roast, their dark roast, their medium roast. You're going to find your favorite blend. But my favorite thing about Seven Weeks Coffee, besides a delicious cup of coffee, is that 10% of all of the revenue of the company, not just the profits, 10% of Seven Weeks Coffee revenue goes directly to support the pro-life movement. 10% of all their sales go to pregnancy resource centers to provide material free help to moms and babies in need. So when you go to sevenweekscoffee.com, you join their subscription where you get your monthly subscription of coffee. You know that 10% of all of that sale is going directly to support moms and babies in need. Plus you're getting an amazing and delicious cup of coffee through sevenweekscoffee.com. So go to sevenweekscoffee.com today. Use the code Lila at checkout. You, if you do that and you sign up for the Heartbeat Club, you will become a monthly member and you will get up to 25% off your first order and know that part of what you're doing when you drink your coffee every morning is supporting moms and babies in need. In fact, Seven Weeks Coffee has almost hit their milestone of donating over half of a million dollars to pregnancy resource centers, and you helped make that happen. So thank you and continue to support sevenweekscoffee.com and drink this delicious coffee by going there today and ordering your next coffee bundle. Go to sevenweekscoffee.com today, use the code LILA at checkout, and enjoy your delicious coffee. What was one of the, after you had that almost reconversion moment yeah. and of total surrender. Mm -hmm. And that's so powerful what you share, because I, I believe that that's what we were called to do almost da daily. We have, yeah. I mean, I was just earlier this morning, I'm like, I have to surrender again on yeah. all the things, like go through the list of what you're surrendering. Like, sometimes you got to get specific and like uncover what it is that you're holding onto in your heart. But after that surrender, you have this financial miracle, then you're going to book the chosen just a few months later. 
which I want to have a question, of course, questions about that. But was there a moment, and maybe it wasn't shortly after, maybe it was, I don't know, sometime in the last few years, where there was a huge trial of that surrender associated with that surrender that you can share? And how did you deal with it? Well, even when I booked The Chosen, I wasn't, wasn't like I was immediately on easy street. I still, I still had to do these other jobs to kind of survive. Like it wasn't survival. It was, it wasn't survival money. It was less than survival money because in, initially we only had, we only shot four episodes and there was no money like at all. And it was an, almost like another six months before we shot the back four episodes because we were crowdfunding it. And so we were depending on like the generosity of strangers to believe in this thing that we were doing. And so I still had to keep working, but how I perceived my struggles my, and my trials was completely different than, than prior than but prior to the, the surrender. I just didn't worry. I didn't, I wasn't concerned. And inevitably, like I'd go maybe a few weeks without work and I'm like, got some bills coming up, but I know you got me. Like, I'm cool. And inevitably, like the night before, like a, a bill was due or something, a check would come in or somebody would call me out of the blue for work. Like it just, I'm like, you know, it was kind of like God was saying, you still trust me? <laughs> you sure? Do okay. You, wait, so do you worry at all? Oh, I mean, I have all kinds of worries, but I have to check them at the door every day like everybody else. And, and I have um, a profoundly enhanced uh, level of trust and faith in God about all the things that I'm stressed about, you know, that, that when I bring them to prayer, I'm like, I, I know you got it. Just help me deal with the, the physical side effects of stress because I know... I know he has it and I just have to entrust it. And, and, and that, I think that's where the prayer life comes in. It's just like, okay, I just got to dig, dig into my prayer. I got to, I got to do my rosary. I got to, you know, I got to, this is a rosary bracelet. That's why I looked at my, it's not just a regular bracelet, but like I have rosary in my pocket, but um, I have to, I have to commit to my mm -hmm. prayer life in a way that allows me to, to live out the things that I'm, I'm trying to, um, be a model of for other people myself, you know, I have to, I have to follow that or I have to walk the walk really in my own life. And, and that's, it's not easy, but it's something that you have to commit to. On a, on a foundational level, it sounds like in that surrender moment. And then when you ultimately booked the chosen and then worked hard to make the chosen, what it has known today and is loved today as mm. it sounds like you had this conviction though that you had these talents as an actor and that you should use your talents as an actor. Oh yeah. I mean, I, even before the chosen, I was convinced that God had a plan mm -hmm. for me with the, the gifts that he gave me, uh, and that he would somehow use them for his benefit to reach or change the world. Um, and, and, uh, and I, I just, I knew that in my bones. I just didn't know how, you know, I felt it. I felt convicted in it. And, um, I knew it was just a matter of staying with it, you know? And when I, in that surrender moment, I said, Lord, if there's something else I'm supposed to be doing, you have to, you have to show me what it is because I do not know. I don't, there's nothing else calling me or drawing me to, to, to do something different or to serve you in some other way. So if there is, and I'm not mm -hmm. seeing it, like I need you to show it to me because I'm, I'm blind at the moment. So show me what it is or, or, you know, just take this weight from me and I'll hang in. I'll continue to hang in. And, and he did. What's so powerful about that is that you were willing to say, to let it go. Yeah. And, and that I think is where maybe some people struggle is it because they say oh, I'm surrendering it to God, but their mind is fixed on an outcome. Yeah. Right. But well, let me sounds... just send this email. Just one more email. I guess I'll surrender <laughs> Lord, but I, I think if I just call this person, maybe that'll change things. And it's like, okay. Well, then have you really surrendered it? Mm. Like if you can feel the tension release from your shoulders after you have professed to surrender something and, and think out the example of like, okay, well, if this doesn't happen, how am I going to feel? And really like get Ignatian about it. And just be like, let me sit in what it would feel like if this didn't work. 
And if you're stressed still, then you haven't surrendered it, truly. Is that kind of like contemplating death in a way? Like, even if I die this moment, it's in the hands of the almighty God. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I... It's like, I, it doesn't matter in one sense. Like, yeah. God's got it. I think about that. I mean, I have these skull rings that are yeah, for I me, Memento <laughs> Mori. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, that's what it is. It's like, okay... If, if tomorrow doesn't arrive for me, like, have I done everything I can today to, to practice holiness and to grace and, and to, and to try to serve God the best, to the best of my abilities. Um, and hopefully the answer will, will be yes. And, and there is this, uh, peace with, with, uh, the concept of, of death that I think as, as a, Christian as a Catholic that we're, we're truly asked to contemplate because we don't know the day nor the hour. Right. So I think it's something that we, it's a, it's having a healthy relationship with the idea of death. And, and I mean, this is, this is just a stop gap anyway. This is just a, you know, one of the stops on the journey to our true home, um, with, with our, our Lord. And so, um, Becoming detached to the things of the world and the outcomes of, of success and, and the, the things we pine for. I think the more detached we can be from this world, uh, the better off we're going to be and the more prepared we'll be for the next. How do you stay grounded, Jonathan, with all of the huge interest and, I mean, the huge fan base that you've developed with The Chosen and then Jesus Revolution and your other projects you're working on. I mean, it's incredible to see. It's like this, almost like this revival <laughs> happening where people yeah. are feeling this encounter with Jesus through your creative work mm. that they maybe hadn't experienced before. They're having it reaffirmed. And then of course that Glory gets connected to, to you as a, as the actor, you as the talent, you as the person. How do you deal with all that? Uh, I, I know that it's not up to me. I know that it's, it's by here, but for the grace of God, go I, um, and I'm, I'm here because of grace. I'm, I'm, I survived the, the lean years and the, the wandering in the desert by the grace of God. And so I have to constantly point to him. I kind of feel like I, as, as a, a media apostle, uh, or a media evangelist, if you will, um, that, you know, passively not, you know, not, I'm not going out doing sermons or anything, thankfully. Um, uh, but kind of though uh, <laughs> on Instagram, right? You do prayers. And... Well, yeah, I mean, I used to pray and stuff, but I, I, I don't have that talent. I think to, to, to do what pastors and priests do. Um, but I can, I can use my gifts to, to be a witness to, to kind of point the way in, you know, in, in as modern and artistic a way as, as could be, you know, reminiscent of a, of John the Baptist. I mean, he, all he did was he prepared the way and I'm just, I find myself, I'm like, that's, I'm just like, go to that guy, go to Jesus. Like, I'm, I'm just here. I'm not actual Jesus. I'm, I'm here. I'm playing Jesus to <laughs> point you to Jesus so that you can experience, um, the true and, and, um, you know, soul changing spirit and life giving essence that is, you know, the, our Lord and savior. Good ranchers deliver some of the best beef, poultry, and pork directly to your door, directly from farmers and ranchers in the United States. I love Good Ranchers because it's American meat delivered and the meat is delicious, especially the chicken. I love the chicken breasts. Goodranchers.com has an amazing promotion going on right now where if you sign up for a subscription box and you use the code Lila, you get $25 off your box, you get free fast shipping, and you get to add on a free delicious product of chicken breast, bacon, ground beef, or salmon. So go to GoodRanchers.com today, support your local ranchers, and partner with a company that supports your pro-life and pro-family values. And use the code LILA at checkout for $25 off your first subscription order, in addition to free shipping and your choice of ground beef, chicken breasts, those are my favorite, salmon or bacon. Go to GoodRanchers.com today and enjoy delicious American meat delivered. Did you have people growing up or early in your career who said, you look like Jesus, you should be Jesus in the movies? Yeah, I had uh, when I was in when I was in my early twenties. I had a I had a job. I worked in a like um like a, an express mail company, like worldwide comp uh, that that did mail all over the world. And there was this guy that worked there that, uh, and I had long hair and a beard. And every morning, uh, I when I'd see him, he's like, "Hey, Jesus, what's up, Jesus?" 
I'm like, oh, this guy, you know, and I'm like, yeah, long hair and a beard, darker features. Yeah, I, that's cool. I'll, 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 I don't mind it at all. You know, I had no clue that that would become a thing. It wasn't a thing in your mind. Like, <laughs> oh, I could, I would, I would kill it. Jim no. Caviezel got out of the way. I'd kill no, it. I was wasn't. Like, Jim Caviezel did it, so I don't have to. You yeah, know, like. he, he, I mean, he's amazing too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had, I had no clue that this was where my life would lead. How do you prepare for your role as Jesus in the chosen? Um, what do you do to get yourself in the headspace of literally God? Well, I can't do that because I'm not that. And so I don't even attempt that. What I can do is approach Jesus from his humanity, being human, fully and flawed human that I am. Um, his, his perfection of humanity is not something I can touch, but the struggle with the realities of humanity and the, the, what it means to be living as a human in this world and dealing with fear and loneliness and isolation and pain and joy and, and uh, mirth and suffering and sorrow. Like I, I, I can, can identify with most of the, his humanity. I think his humanity was, you know, an emotionally intense, uh, experience like the most, um, I guess if, if like, if we experience emotions on a level from like one to 10, mm -hmm. like he would experience them at like a hundred, you know? And, um, because I mean, being the author of life, like that's, I, I, I don't even know what his humanity could have been like, but I, I can just lend whatever I have to, to that. Mm -hmm. And get out of the way for everything else. And my goal is to essentially be um, a mirror reflecting the light and love of God through this character, through these lines that I'm given to say, through my own devotion and my faith and my love for Jesus myself, and uh, hope that it r registers and it reads as authentic and, and, and trying to really uh, put myself in the time and space of what he, he might have experienced and what he might have thought and um and then whatever the result is for the audience is is out of my control you know um but i just i try to show up and get out of god's way and let him do the the mystical work that comes as a result of of this um performance that and 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 i, I say mystical because like the things that people reach out to us about and things that things that have happened in people's lives, like people that were going to commit suicide and decided not to because they watched a few episodes of the show and it wow. did something in their heart that they like weren't expecting or atheists that have converted and started seeking a relationship with Jesus. And, um, you know, even a, a letter from a, 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 a Satan worshiper is like, you know, I, I don't believe this, but I, I really like this show. <laughs> like if he's writing in, like, what is God doing in that guy's life? Do you know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. You don't know. People are watching the show now in prison. It's been seen in every country on the planet. Um, it's it's been brought into the country of like Madagascar. Like there's never been any foreign television, you know, that wow. has been seen. And like the president of Madagascar is a huge fan and has made it accessible for the entire country. And like crazy things are happening with the because of the show, because of through God, you know, and, and the the show being the the vehicle by which God is reaching people on a whole other level. So uh, it is mystical in that aspect, and in as much as I am a part of creating that experience, um, I you know I know that is has nothing to do with me. I just I show up and be like, let's do it, and and then these things happen. So it's it's been it's been pretty extraordinary. Is it is it getting harder or easier as you create m more seasons to play Jesus? Well, we just wrapped season five, and that was for me that was the hardest season that I've ever had. It was the the most challenging thing I've ever done as an actor. Um, and I think it's going to be the most powerful season that we've ever done. Um, I can only imagine what the crucifixion is going to be like, but um, mm. most of my dialogue now is in the rear view mirror. Like all the big speeches have been said. So it's, it's kind of, it's bittersweet for me, but I know going into this season, which also covers, you know, it covers Holy Week. And so we have the last supper and we have the garden of Gethsemane and, and, I, I, I feel pretty confident that I, that I left it all on the floor, you know, left it all in the field, so to speak. 
And um, what was the hardest thing for you to do? The Last Supper and the Garden of Gethsemane. Both of those were really, really difficult for me. So um, you personally, like emotionally, or you to try to be Jesus in those scenes? All of it. Just ima- just think of it. Like imagine you have to be Jesus <laughs> in these pivotal moments in our faith, breaking the bread, big, instituting the Eucharist. Like, what do you do with that? You know, like, how do I even approach that? And how do you approach that? Do you have prayer, a spirit? Yeah. Prayer. Prayer and supplication and fasting to a point. And, and you know, when we shot the institution, I had, I had my spiritual director in town with me, basically praying for me as I was shooting and saying rosaries and just like, you know, and, and a lot of my team was there praying for me. Um, and I, I needed to make sure that I had all the spiritual firepower behind me. And I have, I mean, we have the most amazing fans. They're so open and, 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 um, genuine and, and, uh, loving and, and just completely, uh, committed to praying for all of us and this show and how it can touch, you know, the world and change the world. And I, and I think it's, it's doing that one person at a time. Um, just by virtue of the letters that we receive. And, and I had even heard recently, I don't know, I don't know how public this has been, but I, I, I think I'm okay because it's such a remarkable story, but there was an ex Taliban member that converted like through this show. I mean, that was what I had heard that like they'd watched the show and they were like, they must've been coming out of this life and all of a sudden this choke got into their hands and they're like following Jesus. Now it's like, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Life. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God in the highest. All right. Last question. Mm. You're obviously in the very middle of the chosen bonanza. I mean, there's the next season is coming out and there's much more to come. I'm sure there beyond yeah, even got that. Two seasons left. We've got two seasons left. Uh, when you think about your personal life, what are your, if you can share, if you're willing to share, what are your, mm-hmm. what are your goals? What are your dreams? And also professionally beyond even the chosen. I mean, do you have a vision of what you're aiming at at this point? You know, my, my goal would be to continue to reach people and get them to think about their relationship with their creator, whether it's playing Jesus or some other character. I mean, I, I try to participate in stories that have some sort of redemptive quality and if it's if it skews more on you know the secular like you know what what about the characters that i'm playing even if it's not a faith or faith adjacent kind of story which you know um i hope to do more of those as well i think there's always room for the character whether it's spoken or unspoken to have some kind of a journey that informs them to have some kind of a relationship with God and and what I've learned even from playing Jesus is that um, my relationship with my faith will come through, I think, no matter what I'm doing. Um, And that is my prayer anyway. And that's what I ask God to to allow, that it may kind of catalyze people who maybe have never thought about, you know, what happens when they die or where they're going to go or what, what their relationship is like with God and who is Jesus Christ and why was he so important to you know, why is he so important to, to humanity, um, to at least instigate, you know, somebody to ask those questions of themselves. Um, so that professionally, and then personally, you know, I I mean, if there's any, if there is a a plan, if God has a plan for me to have a family, maybe one day I that's, I'm open to that. I'm basically my, my MO is to, is to just, um, serve him in whatever capacity He's asking me to and to to recognize and to discern um, those those choices and those uh, decisions that I will have to make, um, you know, uh, uh, clearly, you know, in in consultation with him, and to not ever get, um, you know, blinded by my own ambition or my own interests or or anything like that. Is to just you know serve him with all my soul, all my heart, and all my strength. Thank you for surrendering to God and sharing your incredible talent with the world. Thank you, Lana. It's really special. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jonathan. God bless you.
That was so fun to talk with Jonathan Rumi. Thank you for listening. I was getting questions from you guys to ask him, and I tried to squeeze in some of them as we went. Tonight, I'm going to be actually sitting down with Jonathan for a full hour to do another interview with him with our friends over at J. Sarah High School. That interview is available to you on Locals for those of you who become Locals patrons. So if you go over to our Locals page and you sign up to become a patron, and that way you can support the show, you can check out the hour-long conversation that I have with Jonathan Rumi over there. Go check it out at the link in the description. Thank you all so much again for listening. As always, your support means the world. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to the podcast and share it with your friends. That helps the show reach more people. A huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the world's leading Catholic network, reaching millions with the truth about the faith, entertainment, and news. Check them out at EWTN.com.